Oh, if these walls could talk on this parlor floor. It has hosted foreign dignitaries, heads of state. The history here is incredible. Sarah Gore and welcome to Open House NYC. We've got a great show this week filled with beautiful and unique homes and I am bringing it all to you from this sleek sky-high apartment in the heart of Midtown. The defining feature of this home is, can you guess? Views of course. 360 degrees of exposures frame iconic city views in every direction. But a home is more than just its views. This one's got style and comfort to spare. From the private landing, you enter into this grand loft-like entertaining space with airy 10-foot ceilings, hardwood floors, and plenty of wall space for all your art collection. Check out this custom chef's kitchen decked out with white oak cabinetry and marble countertops. There are four bedrooms in all, including this luxurious primary suite. We are starting things off at this Gilded Age townhouse on the Upper East Side. It's filled with classic details throughout its over 5,500 square feet. A stately slice of old world New York, beautifully updated for today's living. Check it out. In the 1890s, lots of things were happening. Carnegie Hall was being built, the New York City Public Library was founded, and a very important guy named Richter built this amazing house on one of the best blocks in New York City. This is 17 East 92nd Street. I'm Brian Lewis, and I'm so excited to show you this home. Oh, if these walls could talk on this parlor floor. Since this home was built, it has hosted foreign dignitaries, heads of state. The history here is incredible, but the most important thing is that it's still so relevant. In a townhouse, the most important floor, right here, parlor floor, why is that? Well, the scale is bigger. The rooms are huge, the ceilings are high. This is where your guests come up those stairs. And this is where parties happen. And it leads you right to this gorgeous living room. This floor leads to sort of this great casual elegance that I think gives this home a permanence. In a lot of townhouses, these rooms can feel cold. This feels warm, inviting. There is a great fireplace, original floors, great moldings, high ceiling, these windows, and my favorite thing about it, great acoustics. You hungry? The journey to the dining room is dramatic. Through these big doors, right off the gallery, You've got all this great woodwork that's been here since the 1800s with another fireplace, a Juliet balcony, room for a huge table. There's something timeless and stunning about this space. But my favorite thing, these back stairs. Takes you right to the kitchen. The garden level has been completely reimagined and I think it's been done in the best ways. It feels classic but the flow is what really works. Two entrances, a bonus dining room, a bonus living room, nice millwork, a gorgeous redone kitchen with a dining bar. Why is it called the garden level? I'll show you. How about this? Your own private backyard in the heart of New York City. You get a great vantage point of the house here. And here's what I really love about this completely redone garden. I love that everything around you is low and it's very light and it's very quiet and it's private. Think this is great? Let's take a look upstairs. Every good home deserves a fantastic primary suite. Here, it's an entire floor. Big windows, big ensuite marble bath, great closets, a fireplace, and a huge room. But in the front, you've got a bonus living room. 
So, do you ever need to go downstairs? It has been an absolute pleasure to show you 17 East 92nd Street, our peek into the new Gilded Age right here in Carnegie Hill. I'm Brian Lewis, and thanks for coming by. Up next, we are in Los Angeles for a look at this unique modern home. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. Now let's check out this jaw-dropping architectural gem in Bel Air with interiors to match. This home has it all and then some with over 20,000 square feet of dream living. Well, wake up, because we are going on a tour. <laughs> Enjoy. Hi, I'm Sally Forster Jones with the Sally Forster Jones Group at Compass and I welcome you to 1859 Bel Air Road. We're on approximately 1.3 acres of land and about 20,000 square feet of beautiful home. What I really love about this home is the fact that there is nothing like this. Being special and being unique is what it's all about, and I can't wait to share it with you. So the first surprise, you enter, there is this incredible staircase. And on the way down, make sure you look at this amazing chandelier. This is truly your entertainer's paradise. You can entertain for five people, you can entertain for hundreds. The first thing that we see is beautiful fireplace that separates the different areas so that you have a different experience in each spot. The bar is such a highlight and centerpiece and so different and unique. The curvature of the lights and the lines complement the back of the bar. The panels that are placed here all have a different space level and it creates a different kind of a feeling and energy. So this is it, Southern California living indoor, outdoor, entertaining. And every single time I step out here, I am so amazed by the views, the vistas, the infinity pool, and a huge yard. And that's what makes this home, in addition to everything else, very, very special. The entertainment does not stop on the main level, so follow me. So this is our lower level. And so we can play pool or we can have a drink. This is the beautiful wine cellar, glass, visible part of your room and part of your space. And we have multiple lounging areas here as well. And visit with our beautiful movie theater. We have special panels that are absorbing the sound. And this is a Hollywood type movie theater. Large screen, another bar where you can grab a snack and enjoy the show. So this is my resort at home. So I have a beautiful tub that I can't wait to get into. And the backdrop from Argives in Portugal. And I'm transported into another world to relax and enjoy the moment. After that, I want to go and get a little bit of privacy and go up to the primary suite. At the top of the stairs are the sleeping quarters. And we have this long, beautiful corridor heading toward the primary suite. Can you imagine waking up here every morning, looking out at this like, oh my God, this is making my day. In addition to having this beautiful space, you also have the convenience of two primary bathrooms and two closets, but yet all inclusive as part of your sanctuary. So to put the cherry on top of this masterpiece, I have the sky, I have the greenery. This is absolutely paradise. So this concludes our tour of this magnificent property. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have, and I look forward to touring you again at the next one. Coming up, we are in the West Village. We'll see you in just a bit.
Welcome back, everyone. Now we tour this gem in the West Village with epic Hudson River views. This over 2,500 square foot apartment feels even bigger with 11 foot ceilings and walls of glass that puts the action of our fair city right at your feet. Enjoy. Welcome to 165 Charles. This is Spencer Means with Compass. Today I'm going to show you this amazing three bedroom apartment on the 10th floor of Richard Meyer's third building in the West Village. And some even say it's the crown jewel. The home is over 2,500 square feet with wide open spaces and a perfect flow. This is definitely a home designed for entertaining inside and out. And it features 360 degree views translation, and iconic view wherever you look, including this front row seat to the Hudson River. Rain or shine, waterfront living at its best. Check out these 11 foot ceilings and walls of glass that make the home feel even larger. These African Wedgwood floors add a sense of timeless elegance. I guarantee your guests will really be impressed. They may never want to leave, but this terrace is what it's all about. 30 feet with postcard views of Manhattan. You could stand out here and wait for your ship to come in. But if you're in here, your ship has already come in. There's also enough room for a large dining table. Trust me, this would be the place to have a holiday feast. And all the cooking would happen right here. Because the kitchen is open, it had to look good. It's sleek, modern, and functional, and definitely the heart of the home. And when the party in the great room gets too loud, sneak off to this cozy den. It's a perfect place to take a nap on a rainy day like this. Each bedroom in this home is special, but this primary suite is on another level. First of all, it's a corner, so it has two exposures. These views make waking up a joy, no matter how hard you celebrated the night before. Being in here makes you feel like you can take on the world. In addition to all this space, the primary suite also has two walk-in closets and a spa-like bath. It's a whole new standard of luxury for the West Village. This is a downtown masterpiece with unparalleled views and interiors to match. Thanks for coming. We're gonna take a quick break, but when we come back, we are with this familiar designer on the Upper West Side. We'll see you in just a few. Welcome back, everyone. Now we're with interior designer and open house friend, Vanessa De Leon. She shows off this Upper West Side apartment she designed for her clients, empty nesters who decided to go big and bold. Let's see what she did. Hi, I'm interior designer Vanessa DeLeon, and welcome to a duplex I design on the Upper West Side. My client's kids went off to college, and usually you downsize. In this case, they upsized. They purchased the apartment above them and combined the two. This was a full gut renovation, and I had a ton of fun designing with my client. Come take a look. Where I'm standing right now is the addition my client purchased. This apartment consisted of two bedrooms, a dining room, a kitchen, a living room, and now it's full entertainment. The first thing we did was establish a color palette. My client was inspired by her travels. She happened to walk into a hotel and love the color blue on the kitchen cabinets. And this color is not just in the kitchen cabinet, it's sprinkled throughout the entire apartment. Since my clients love to entertain, I knew they needed a large center island. I picked this beautiful countertop and backsplash and the color of the countertop echoes the powder blue in the cabinets. Continuity is a big part of my design, and you'll see that throughout the apartment. It was very important to have an open concept, so that helped me decide where I was gonna put the dining room. Not only does a chandelier delineate the space, but you can see it from any room in the house. So I had to make sure it looked good. It's linear, it's translucent, and quite frankly, it's a statement piece. I wanted a traditional dining room wood table, but I didn't want the heaviness of walnut or darker wood, so I picked this beautiful bleached tabletop. And the chairs I picked, surprise, surprise, blue. 
We uncovered this column when we were doing the renovation and my clients love that it looks like a column that you see in the subway. Instead of hiding it, we embraced it. 96 was the year they moved into this apartment, they got married and happens to be their local subway stop. And the art behind me was made by my client because they love to live in New York. In the living room, again, I was really focused on the floor plan. So your first thought might be to put the sofa in front of the fireplace. But I didn't want to cut off the living room from the rest of the space. So I came up with this idea of flanking the fireplace with these two sofas to draw people in. When selecting these sofas, it was all about softening the space. So they have a beautiful round back and a soft feel. When I selected the cladding for the fireplace, I wanted to make sure it tied the room in. It's the same material I chose for the backsplash and the countertop. I included the Lucite chairs for an area so she can sit and also potentially do work. And on the back of them happened to be song lyrics because my clients are music lovers. And we couldn't forget the staircase. We installed a show-stopping wallpaper custom colored to match the rest of the apartment. While we were doing this renovation, we discovered this niche. So we used it as an opportunity to place this pedestal. And not just any pedestal, this is actually from the West Side Story movie. And for a little sentimental touch, the light fixtures was a purchase my clients made in Paris. I like to call this space Active Lounge. You can watch a movie, play games, have a snack, or help yourself to a beverage. When picking the pieces in here, it was all about comfort, design, and functionality. It started with this incredible large sofa and these pillows by yours truly. To make this room easy for conversation, I added these two swivel chairs across from the sofa. You might recognize a stone on the TV wall. It's the same from the upstairs. As I told you, continuity is key in design. And since there's a lot of movie watching here, I wanted to make sure there was a space for snacks. Sweet as fish, anyone? Since this was a gut renovation and my client was open-minded, I really was able to let my creative juices flow. And the results speak for themselves. Join me for the next one. Coming up, we are in the Flower District to hang out at this designer's live-work abode. Welcome back, Open House family. Now we're in New York's Flower District with interior designer Drew McGookin. Drew is no stranger to taking risks and his exuberant live-work loft is a tribute to his unique aesthetic. See why. Hi, my name is Drew. I am principal designer at Drew McGookin Interiors and welcome to my home in the heart of Chelsea's famous Flower District. And I can't wait to show you around. The first space you walk into is my DMC Design Atelier. This space actually used to be the home of my company until we moved across the street. The office is located nearest to the windows because the bright light and the beautiful cityscape bring such an exciting, inspiring element to our work. Speaking of exciting, uh, did you notice the taxi cab yellow? I really wanted a pop. I wanted something that felt saturated, happy, fun, but also mellowed out as a neutral. So I went for mellow yellow. Since we often host client presentations in this space, we installed a cork wall. And when we're presenting, we remove the artwork, remove the accessories, and that's where we actually pin up client fabric to present to them for their homes. Since the biggest, boldest main windows of space are at the front, we decided to use open bookcases as a divider between the living space and the workspace. The idea is carve out space, but don't lose the light. So this is the living room, and this space is a real mashup. So one of the design intentions really that I wrapped around this space was thinking about the lens of work that I'd done for clients and picked favorite moments and created myself a piece. The art in this space really centers around Aboriginal and photography. I've been collecting Aboriginal art for a number of years and have some really classic, beautiful photographs as well. This space is not only about custom pieces that I designed, but I also layered in vintage pieces, classic Mies van der Rohe David by Knoll, ceramic lamps by Martz. I really wanted to add that element of timelessness to the space. A kitchen and a dining room are a natural duo, but what's great in this space is I actually used the dining room as a transition from a more formal living space into the kitchen space. And I anchored it by recessing this bar cabinet into the wall with a mirrored back to reflect light from the front. The big design moment here is bringing the copper wall down onto the island. 
Ultimately, the goal is to create a warm, creative space to enjoy entertaining friends and family, and for me to enjoy spending time here. No one can believe I actually sleep in this bedroom under this skylight, but in fact, I do, and I do it beautifully. And no one can believe that I actually have two life-size portraits of myself, but I do. Can we talk about this wallpaper? The genius behind this wallpaper is all of these patterns start from an actual painting, and this is one that I fell in love with minute one. The bed is actually a piece that I designed for a client on the Upper East Side, and I liked it so much in their space, I made one for myself. In the famous words of Ariana Grande, I'm a, I'm a need space. Behind this door, my walk-in wardrobe. Thank you for joining me today. I'm hoping you'll take away a few tips on how years of collecting can layer together in a beautiful way to create a wonderful home space. Give this video a thumbs up and let us know which of these gorgeous homes featured in this episode was your favorite. So many to choose from, which will you pick? <laughs>